I've run out with zebra tops. So I've gone with a onesie this week. <laughs> it's very comfortable. I'm quite happy. Uh, hi, I'm Chronically Jenny and welcome to another EDS Awareness Month video. In today's video, we're going to be talking about some of the rarer types of Ehlers-Danlos Syndromes. Hypermobile Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome and Hypermobility Spectrum Disorder are still very rarely diagnosed, but we're not sure they're necessarily as rare as we once thought they might be. However, there are 12 other types of rare to very, very, very rare Ehlers-Danlos Syndromes, some of which only have 20 odd people in the entire world diagnosed. Today we are going to be mainly focusing on vascular type and classical type EDS. I have to say I don't know as much about the rarer types as I'd like to so I'm really looking forward to learning something from this video and I hope you do too. For now I should probably put some clothes on. That's better. <laughs> So today we are focused on our rarer zebras and they are going to tell you a little bit about themselves and their types. Hi, my name is Sydney and I have the classical type of Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. The difference between my type and some of the other types is the fact that classical EDS tends to have more skin involvement and some organ involvement in terms of prolapsing. Um, skin involvement includes very stretchy and elastic skin, um, very fragile skin. For example, I've accidentally brushed my hand against this slightly textured wall and the skin of my hand has torn off. There's also issues with healing and scars reopening after years in years post-op, I've had that happen a couple times with my J-tube. Um, it's definitely quite challenging in its own regard. Hi, my name is Bradley Jones, also known as uh, Veds underscore Zebra on Instagram. Uh, I come from Australia. Uh, the subtype of EDS that I have is called Vascular Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. Oh, well, the difference is, uh, my type, uh, I have a lot of uh, vascular issues uh, compared to a lot of other subtypes that can have uh, dislocations, um, uh, really bad chronic pain, um, fatigue. Um, I know with mine, the vascular side of things is really quite impacted. My next question was, what's your worst symptom and why? Uh, I think all my symptoms when I've had uh, my multiple dissections, uh, I think they're all pretty bad. Um, obviously I've had crushing chest pain, uh, blurred vision, uh, nearly, nearly blacking out, as in passing out. Um, it's just bloody scary. I mean, when it's happened to me, I thought, you know, is this, the, is this it? Have I met my maker? But um, luckily I've pulled through. But um, yeah, it's, it's no fun at all. The worst symptom for me um, is probably nausea and vomiting. I am most severely affected GI-wise, um, and sometimes if I get into a vomiting spell because I ate something, in general, if I ate something, <laughs> a lot of times I'm not able to stop and I just continue to vomit out my soul and if my medication doesn't stop it and then the protocol is for me to go to the emergency room and, and if they can't stop it through IV medication then I get admitted to the hospital and just to try and stabilize me again. Because usually when that happens, I get very, very unstable. Everything else starts flaring up and it's a hot mess and it's not fun. I found it great to be able to connect with so many zebras across the world with the same type of Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome as me. But when you have a much rarer type, 
it's so much more difficult because there are obviously less people to connect with that understand exactly what's happening in your body. So my last question to my lovely rare zebras is what's the hardest part about living with a condition that's just so rare? The hardest part about classical EDS for me is that physicians, well, it's just very isolating. I've only met maybe one or two people online that also have classical type and it kind of, I mean, I'm glad that not many have it because EDS and classical type does suck, but it's just very isolating when not very many people have it and you want to meet and have people that completely understand what it's like. Yeah, it'd be nice to go to a lot of specialists and doctors and all that then for them to turn around and go, oh yeah, we know all about your your genetic syndrome. Um, and just, uh, yeah, just that awareness around it and um, education purposes. I'd just like to say to everyone out there watching this, just keep going. Um, you're all very inspiring to me. I love following all your work on social media platforms. Um, uh, just to see how everyone goes about their own different um, and individual circumstances is, is really amazing. Um, you're all very strong um, and I find that very inspiring. So just keep it up and um, yeah, I love your work guys. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching and thank you for my beautiful rare zebras for taking part in that video. I hope you've all learned a little something about the rarer types of Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. If you've liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, I would love it if you'd hit subscribe. I will see you very soon for another EDS Awareness Month video. To find out more about Ehlers-Danlos Syndromes of any and all types, please head to ehlers-danlos.com. I'm also doing a fundraiser this year as obviously the coronavirus pandemic has taken a big hit on charities. So if you go to the link in my description, you will find my EDS Awareness Month fundraiser. I really hope you can donate if you can. Thank you.